Welcome to another Drug Chug episode, and today we'll be talking about niacin, also known as vitamin B3, and how it works, plus some pharmacology. So let's get right into it. This video will quickly go over what is niacin, how it actually works, some of the side effects we see, and then we'll talk about common products, both over-the-counter and prescription products for niacin. And then if you wait till the end, as always, we'll have a short quiz to see what we retain. So what exactly is niacin? Well, niacin is actually one of our B vitamins. Specifically, it's our vitamin B3, and it could also be called nicotinic acid. And typically, we consume vitamin B3 in our diet. And if a patient has very low levels of vitamin B3, we could also give them a multivitamin or give them a pure vitamin B3 supplement. So we already know that niacin is our vitamin B3, but what does it actually do? Well, people take niacin to treat dyslipidemia or if they have bad cholesterol. And the way it works is it lowers our LDL or bad cholesterol. It lowers our triglyceride levels and it can increase our HDL or good cholesterol. So when we're at a hospital and we do a lipid panel for a patient, these are the four things we see. We see our total cholesterol, the triglyceride levels, the HDL, and LDL levels. And again, niacin works to lower the triglycerides and the LDL, and at the same time, it increases our good cholesterol or our HDL. Now, niacin having these three main benefits, it helps clear and open up our vasculature, which is very healthy for our heart, and it will prevent any ASCVD risk in the future, such as stroke or heart attack. So we know niacins are vitamin B3. We know that it's used to help lower our cholesterol levels, but how does it actually work? Well, here we have our adipose or our fat tissue. And near the fat tissue, we have something called our hormone-sensitive lipase, which is an enzyme that breaks down the adipose into free fatty acids. Now, these free fatty acids are an ingredient that go to our liver to form something called triglycerides. Now, these triglycerides are also an ingredient that form into VLDL, which will then convert to LDL, and LDL is our bad cholesterol. The less of it we have, the better. So what niacin does is it actually blocks this hormone-sensitive lipase. So it stops the adipose from becoming free fatty acids. And if we stop this step right here, we actually stop free fatty acids from being freed, we stop it from going to the liver, we stop triglycerides forming. That's how we lower our triglyceride levels, which then stops our VLDL, which then finally stops our LDL. So this decreases our triglyceride level and it decreases our LDL or our bad cholesterol. Now, niacin also increases our HDL or our good cholesterol. Now, unfortunately, we still don't know the exact mechanism. It's actually still under research, but we do know it does have a good impact on our HDL cholesterol. All right, let's get into some side effects. Now, niacin actually has a pretty adverse side effect profile. By far, the most noticeable side effect is something called flushing, and this is when the patient's skin becomes extremely red, and this is because of the vasodilation that niacin causes. Because of this, it's recommended to tell our patients that they should take it at bedtime so that when they are flushing, they're not being irritated or embarrassed to go out in public. Another thing to note is they could also take 325 milligrams of aspirin 30 minutes before taking the niacin to reduce the flushing. And also something that's interesting is they can take applesauce before or with niacin to also help reduce the flushing. Patients might also experience something called pruritus, which is itching of the skin. And if it's severe enough, they can take an antihistamine. Taking vitamin B3 may increase your uric acid levels. So this is something to watch out for with patients that already have high uric acid levels or have gout. So that way we don't further their complications. 
And another side effect we might see is hepatotoxicity. And again, this is actually very rare. But the reason why this could happen is because niacin works within our liver. Now that we know what niacin is and how it works and why it works, plus the side effects, let's dive into some of the common products that we might see in our pharmacy or hospital. By far our most common niacin product we see is our vitamin B3 over the counter. And what we see here is that it comes in a very wide dosing range. So when a patient has something called pellagra, which just means deficient vitamin B3 levels, they could take anywhere from 150 to 500 milligrams of vitamin B3 every day. Now, if we're trying to target the patient's cholesterol level, we need a minimum of 1,000 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams every day to treat their dyslipidemia. And the max dose is 8,000 milligrams a day. Keep in mind, the higher the dose that you give a patient, the higher the chance they'll have these side effects like flushing and itching. Our next product here, we have our vitamin B3 extended release. The brand name is Slow Niacin, which is a clever name because it slowly releases the vitamin B3. And again, it is the extended release. And because it slowly distributes the drug, it may reduce the flushing. So this might be an alternative to a patient that is embarrassed or can't handle the flushing side effect. Our next product here is actually our prescription product called Myospan. And again, this is also a slow release. And this is a super slow release product. That's why it's a prescription only product. And here we see that the max dose is 2,000 milligrams every day. And the last product here, we have our flush-free niacin. And this product, we want to avoid majority of the time. The reason being is, yes, it does prevent that flushing side effect. However, instead of it being niacin, it's another product. It's insositol hexanicotinate, which does not help us lower our cholesterol and it does not help us increase our good cholesterol. So our patients will be wasting their money trying to purchase this flush free version where they could just purchase the other versions and just take them at night if the flushing's an issue. All right, you guys made it to the end and as promised, we're going to take a short quiz to see what we retained. So question one, Niacin is used to treat which of the following? Question two, niacin blocks which of these enzymes? Question three, which vitamin B3 product should be avoided? Question four, what can a patient take to reduce the flushing side effect? All right, you guys made it to the end. If you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment down below. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so we could reach out to other people who need this help. And we also have new merch in our store, new t-shirt designs every week, and also Patreon to help support the page. Until next time.